Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. I'm going to let Charlemagne do this. We got a special guest in the He's building. so excited. Well, first of all, I feel like I know you. Because <laughs> you grow up watching Girlfriends, you don, you're Donnell, and we've watched Juiced a, a million Juiced. times. Yes. My man Camille Raheem. Kane is here. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's happening? This is first time on The Breakfast Club. Yeah, exactly. Why they did you dirty and juice, man? Why they do the light-skinned brother dirty and juice, man? The light-skinned brother always gets done dirty. You right. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's all right, though. Um... It's a hood classic. It is. Oh, come on, man. That's an understatement. So, uh, I can't believe that. That's almost 30 years, man. Yeah, yeah. Because I had the I had the 25 year anniversary Juice DVD that came yeah, so, out. Yeah, so I, well, I think I think it's what 27 years, 28 years, something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. That film has held me down for a long time across the country. You still getting clubs free? You get yeah, free man. food? <laughs> no, but but think about it. Any any hood. In America, like I'm still safe. You're still so, good. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> was that your first movie ever? Your yeah, first role? Yeah. How did you get the role? I auditioned like everybody else. Yeah. But yeah. you were 27. Why'd you audition so late in life? I guess I don't know. Well, well, who I I was not like a theater kid. Mm-hmm. I didn't go to school for that. I didn't really know. I grew up here in the city. I grew up in the East Village, mm-hmm. you know, Low East Side. I was just kind of banging around. I had done a couple of commercials Mm -hmm. because some agent thought I was cute. And, you know, I started booking stuff. And they asked me, "Um, would you be interested in auditioning for some legit stuff? I didn't even know what that meant at the time. Yeah, Mm -hmm. he's like, I was doing legal stuff all this other time? I said yes. I was like, yeah, sure, why not? So Mm -hmm. they started sending me on auditions for TV stuff and film stuff. And um, What was your goal career-wise before that? Like, what were you I didn't really have a goal career-wise. Um, I mean, and not a whole lot has changed since then. For, <laughs> no, but for a lot of young, mm-hmm. young black males in this country, mm-hmm. like career, mm-hmm. mm, that's really not on their radar. It's like survival, you know. That's real. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was really in that mode. And for Omar Epps, wasn't that his first movie too? Yeah, but Omar Epps went to LaGuardia. Omar Epps right. was he like, acting, music. Was, he said he took the train. I, I remember him talking about that story. He just went to audition, just like I mean, he Omar auditioned. Omar was ready for that. Mm-hmm. Very yeah, much training. so. Yes, exactly. So t- did, did you take acting classes ever, though, at City no. College or anything? No, no. So did you feel inexperienced around those guys? No. Okay. No. Um. I mean, again, when you're thinking about survival mode, you, you better be confident in who right. you are and what you are if you're going to walk around and, and expect not to get taken, you know. So I, I just did what I normally did. You know? They gave you the job on the spot, like, no. after, or you had a few callbacks? I think there were six callbacks. Wow. It was one of the the most in-depth audition processes to this day that I've ever been a part of. Really? I wonder why it was vetting it so hard. Um, there, It was kind of brilliant, actually, because I'm still friends with Ernest Dickerson, the director. Um, it When you have a low budget like that, it was kind of like uh, you don't get a rehearsal process. Mm-hmm. You don't get 10 mm-hmm. takes. Mm-hmm. Well, no, no, no. I'm talking about before, before the film. Mm-hmm. You know, where you can gather the cast together and let them rehearse some of these scenes and get to know each other. Um, no, generally not. Uh, so th- they kind of use this audition process as a rehearsal process. Oh, by the time gotcha, we got, gotcha, gotcha. by the time we you got the in, script. the got the four guys that did get the roles, they knew what they were doing. So they prior to that, knew each other. Oh, so prior to that, y'all worked with you was with other guys as those. Oh, four? there were so many, so many cats gotcha. in there. Um, in that room. Uh, you know, anybody we anybody know? we know? Uh, yeah, sure. Like who? Flex. Four Master Flex? Nah, oh, shut no. up, man. The guy that played Michael Jackson, oh, man. Oh, yeah. Flex. Whoa, Whoa, that flex. was deep, yo. <laughs> that was so weird. Like, why would you? Why would you do that? That's my dude. No, but that's my man. And honestly, I'm, I'm, yo, on everything. I really, I'm, I'm kind of careful about, you know, my diet when it comes to, to mm-hmm. TV, music, whatever. <laughs> and I just happened upon that. Like, I'm just <laughs> clicking through the channels, and I was like, whoa. Yeah, that was trash. And why, wouldn't, and why wouldn't it be flash? Why wouldn't it be flash? But, but it, was, oh. it was even beyond. I, I wouldn't even say it was trash. It was so bizarre. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, you're you're working on this project for weeks, maybe months. um, And you got so many people. One of the best things about making movies is how collaborative it is. You have all these people, they do lights, Mm -hmm. they do costumes, they build sets, you know, and and we're there working together doing this whole thing. So for 
for weeks, months, nobody was like, yo, this is whack. Horrible. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, let's stop. <laughs> you know? Um, no, I mean, and you, you have that right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was just... I Did was you ever speak to them about that? No. Okay. No, no. I'm, I'm definitely one of those people. It's like, if you ain't got nothing good to say, chill out. I can't tell. Until Please. you get on the breakfast table. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I, did, I didn't say any, I just said I thought the thing was, was bizarre. True. They you said know? it was trash. Yes. Anybody else? Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else was, that, that was there playing parts that we would know? Who, who was supposed to be know. Bishop or before know. Pac? Um, um, wow. Oh, uh, my man. Oh, I can't believe I, I can't remember his name right now. And he's in a wheelchair now. Oh, uh, oh. that was in, uh, for, uh, President House Party. Right. Yeah. That's What's my the, dude, what's the name? Too. I can't remember, I can't remember his name either. Name. Oh, I'm look, I'm, he's in my head. That was in House Party, man. Which one? I don't remember. Who's breakfast stinking House Party? Bilal. Yeah, but what's his real name? Oh, oh, oh. I can't remember. <laughs> oh, That's my dude. They call him like Fresh or something. Oh, I can't remember homie name you right can now. Google it. Yeah, I know you're talking about. But, talking but about. there, I mean, and, and come on, man, it was 27 years ago. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. but yeah, there were a lot of cats in the room. Um, and and. Honestly, Pac, rest his soul. If not for Pac, I probably wouldn't have got that role. Why? He was so fire in the room. You know when you look around and you say, all right, if I'm going to get a job, I'm going to have to be better than this cat right here because mm -hmm. he's killing it? That was what was going on. I mean, you asked about, about the confidence and whatever. No, there's a lot happening that mm -hmm. you don't understand. So you come in and you try to figure it out. And Pac helped me figure it out. I was like, oh, he killing it. He throwing down. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it's like that? That's the vibe. Go. And uh, yeah. yeah. Daryl Chill Mitchell. There you go. Google that. He was not, he, that's, I'm think, he wasn't the guy with the stink breath house party. He was in the house party though for a yeah, second. Yeah. But, a split second. But yeah, that's cool people right there. Did, and were you cool. already did, cool and familiar with like with his music, like a fan of Tupac who? music? No, he, it was, there was no music. There, before. Oh, this was before he had any music out? Juice, yeah. yeah. Juice was way before. Oh, I was trying to remember. Okay. Yeah, Naughty by Nature was playing me music before before their stuff came out. Their stuff dropped the Wait, summer he after Juice even came in, out. Um, digital, with digital Underground. Underground. He was like carrying speakers and records. This and, is before I get around and everything. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I'm Pac jealous of anybody Pac. who met Pac. Why? Just because I feel like he was such a dynamic spirit. I feel that way about Big too, though. Like I'm jealous of any. See, I never met Big. Big. I never met Big. Mm. Yeah. I, that's that's I wish I had. Um, Pac was beautiful, man. He was a beautiful person, like wild, wild as hell. Mm -hmm. But so he really was what we saw in the media. Um, yes, yes. I think I think what makes him so dynamic is that he told the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I mean, always he was just gonna be him, whatever that was that day. That's who he was, and we're not always the same. Every day, some days we are in a bad mood. Some mm -hmm. days we do feel gangster. Some days we we do you know we do feel educated and erudite, whatever. But that's who he was, um, and and he didn't care. Uh, I loved that about him. You know, I knew what I was getting. I was a beautiful human being. I heard somebody and, and, got and robbed. You know, he on. was right too. He's right. His album came out in ninety one, so that Tupac was around the same Tupac time. Lives now, right? Yeah. So that was Brenda got I a was baby. Like, I feel like yeah, we all right, knew yeah. who he was, Pac was out, when yep. it happened. But... When I met Pac. He said to me, this time next year, I'm going to be a millionaire. Okay. Mm. Now, growing up where I grew up, there was a lot of cats. They, they talked a lot of stuff, what they was going to do. They didn't do nothing. Speak mm -hmm. it into, he spoke it into existence. Well, that. well, be, beyond that, I mean, like, he, he knew, mm -hmm. like, for fact. And, and did what he said. I looked up, you know, that time next year. I was like, damn, he sure did. He, not <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he did that. That's, How did your know. life change after Juice? Um, I was completely ill prepared I grew up in New York City I ride the subway I still ride the subway I do too and um I was on the subway just to school let out after Juice came out and like these kids were tearing my clothes like had me trapped in the corner and at first I was cool like oh so, so, so. and then it was like a scuffle I was like yo it, it was kind of scary mm -hmm. a little bit you know but well, they thought you was really Raheem well, no, they just were excited. Oh, got you, got you, got you, got you. Um, I mean, like screaming, excited, ah. And people probably assume that you're rich after you do a movie like that that was so critically acclaimed that everyone saw. But I know back then people didn't, like you said, the budget wasn't big. So. Oh, no, no, we, we didn't get paid on, on that film. But I still get paid from that film. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you think, 
over yeah. over 27 years, it adds up. Right. You know, even if it's a little bit. So y'all had back end money on it or? No. Okay, okay. No. Yeah, not back then. Y'all didn't know the money. No, no even, even now. Yeah. Go, that's white people's deal. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you better be like Michael B. Jordan to be getting some back end money. Like, that's the only time that happened. Lil Rel got back in from Get Out. Okay. Because yeah. that budget was so small. Yeah, but but that's that's a black film. Black film, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, they're going to bless you like that. Yeah. Maybe, possibly. <laughs> Didn't someone get robbed on the set of Juice for stealing Pac's jewelry or something? We was, <laughs> we was uptown, man. Um, yeah, there was stuff going on. But that was on Pac. Pac was trying to show everybody love, bringing people into the trailers and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And I, I, Pac got robbed. It took Pac. Pac got Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And but I heard stomp, dude got stomped, stomped out, out for that, though. Oh, yeah, that was ugly. Yeah, that was nice. On the set. On the set. Was Jeez. Pac's boys or? It was Pac and Pac's boys, yeah. Wow. Stretch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't feel like you had to jump into? I, I, that day I had brought um, a girlfriend of mine to the set, you know, trying to flex a little bit. Come on up, take a look Watch around. Watch me work. <laughs> she thought it was part of the movie. <laughs> really, you know, yeah. And I was like, honey, come here. Come 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 here. Come over here. <laughs> yeah, it was that was that was an interesting day. Um but yeah, that was back then, you know. So how time. how else did your life change? And let's talk about the progression to where you are now. So after Juice, your life changed, you're taking the train, people are uh going crazy every time they see you, and then you knew you had to do some more roles after that. So Well, it's not that I had to. I, I wanted to. Right. Um, it's not for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, you might think you want to do a film and you get on the set and it's just a, a, a little bit too much for, for a lot of people. You know, I've seen people just not do it anymore because they can't take the pressure, um, um, the no. You know, people think that it's just like this. No, you, there's a lot of no's. Mm-hmm. You know, and if you're a person that's used to yes... Um, all those no's can can wear you out. Have you have you always been good, or was there some struggle? You know, because sometimes with actors, we see they have a a, a good year, then the no, next year be no nobody's always good. I mean, look at LeBron right now. I mean, not... LeBron still had great averages this season, though, as, a, as an individual. But he ain't good. You think he's happy right now that they're not in the playoffs? He's, no, of course he's, not. He's really. A little pissy about yeah. that, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so I mean, he's still LeBron James, so he's fine. But mm-hmm. I'm saying, there's, there's for everyone. You know, um, yeah. You know, it's probably even harder when your first project that you do is such a huge hit that it's like. I, that was I'm not mad about. Thing. I'm not mad about anything. I've led a very interesting life, mm-hmm. um, and Juice gave me opportunities that I would have never had. Um, and I'm grateful for it. You had a really great role on Girlfriends also. Yes. Darnell. I've been, but but films like Juice, films like Love Jones, films like For Colored Girls. You, you're talking about- I hated you in For Colored Girls, bro. Yeah, me too. That was yeah, nasty. I hated him too. Yo, Ruby. Y'all remember his role in For Colored Girls? <laughs> Y'all don't remember oh, that? Like, he's like, I hated me too. <laughs> um. Well, look. When she killed you, I was happy. No, but, <laughs> but, but I'm from, like I said, I'm from the Lower East Side. The public theater mm-hmm. is down on the Lower East Side. Mm-hmm. And- for Color Girls, the play was at that theater, and my mom and all her girls, like, Enzizaki Shange is a friend of the family. Um, my father, Dylan Kane, he's one of the original last poets. Yep. They, so my mother was like, you know, don't don't mess this up. I really, they called me three times to come back in for that film. I wasn't really, I didn't, I was like, mm, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I got a call from my agent. And he said, if you want to be in a film this year, do this movie. There's nothing else. So go work, you know? So um, you didn't want to do it? Every every male character in that film was heinous. Absolutely. And it was, you know, that's what was written and cool. But no, I've never been the type of person that's like yes to everything. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? Um, and no, no, I just... So you did it just for the check or just the work? Or? No, I did it because that's what, what we're doing today. You know, um, I didn't. I didn't call y'all and say, "Ooh, could I be on the Breakfast Club?" Come down. I was invited. Mm-hmm. That's how my mother raised me that way. Don't go anywhere. You're not invited. Um, so yeah, they wanted me. I went. So you didn't like the depictions of black men in that movie? No, uh, it wasn't comfortable. It didn't yeah. feel good. Um, they brought me in for a couple of different 
roles I auditioned it didn't feel good. You know, it. it yeah, I feel you. Yeah, it was rough. Maybe was, so. I'll tell you, that was a rough day of shooting. Uh, Anika Noni Rose and I, I played a serial rapist in For Color Girls for all those that don't know. Mm -hmm. But that scene where I had to rape her, um, it's one of the toughest days of work. I can imagine. You know, um, of. Uh, I earned I earn my check. That and the, day. Yeah, and the illest thing was about that, it wasn't the fact you were playing a serial rapist, it was your presentation. You were the nice, clean cut guy. Well, Tyler Perry guy. said, We're looking for the nicest possible person we can find to play this horrible person. Right. Um, and, and, you know, I did, I did the work. But that, I mean, but that's not who I am. I've, I've never. What do you mean you did the work? How do you prepare for that? Well, work? no, but. Um, like you said, you hated my character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. have to bring a certain amount of truth to what you're doing. I had a I had a young woman tell me once, "How can I believe anything that you say? You lie for a living." Mm. I was like, "Wow." Mm. Yeah, date over at that point. But <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, "Wow, that's that's interesting. That's an interesting take on it." I said, "But you're wrong. I tell the truth for a living." You got to mm -hmm. pull your own truth and put it into right. the role. Yeah. I mean, that's when you see a performance and, and you're riveted by it. You know, that person's, that's real. That's the truth. Right Where can you there. So what was your truth for that character? Yeah, I was going to say, what was the truth for that character? That's who this man is. And it's not just this moment. This is what he does on the regular. He's a serial rapist. He's a predator. And that's exactly what I, and that's why when you saw that switch and he turned, it felt real. Khalil, I think you need to clear this up real quick. What are you, what are you, what are you, what are you <laughs> saying? What are you saying? No, no, no. Go ahead. Are you a, you're not a predator. No. Yeah. So what do you? What, I don't. But I understand. I understand the mentality behind that. Really? Yeah. Sure. See, I I, I can never understand it when I hear oh, these type of stories. Man, again, going going back to growing up on the Lower East Side of Manhattan when I grew up down there, Avenue B, Avenue C, Avenue D, Thompson Square Park. Yeah, nah. It's not what it is today. No, it's not. It's yeah, super yeah, yeah, cute. Yeah, got today. you, got you. So, um, oh, so I got you. So just, just you, no. But to survive, you better have some understanding of predatory behavior. Got you. So it don't have to be sexual. Just predatory. Oh no, 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 no. Got you. No, got but, you, but, got you, got you. but rape is not not sexual. Really? Really? Is this a power thing? Yes. Got you. Dominance, fear. I've I've I've, I've read that before. And yeah. In his situation, was nothing... of gaining the trust of somebody. And doing this presentation mm -hmm. yes. of a, a certain person, because think about a lot of women who are sexually assaulted by people that they know, maybe people that you trusted, that you would, family members, somebody that you went on a date with, that you've been dating. It happens all the time. So I guess earning someone's trust and then turning. Yeah, it's definitely a power grab, and, and yeah, predatory. I think would would be the best way to describe that. But um, did yeah. you like when your character was killed? Did that make you say, you know what? As long as there's a consequence for his action, I can. I don't know. Um. I don't think I don't think I went that deep into it. Mm -hmm. um, I stayed sort of. I did what I had to do. <laughs> you know, it's like you have. To, sometimes you take this stuff home, so you have to be careful right. about how far you go mm -hmm. um, into. And there's some some roles that no, I don't I don't want to take that on. Um, like this, what kind of role would you not want to take on? Interesting. Like there was a film. I think HBO did it, and it was about Earl Maniga. The basketball player. Yeah, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. the goat. Yeah, and um, Don Cheadle played him. Mm -hmm. And damn, who's the director? It was a black dude. He was a, the doctor on ER. Um, Eric, Eric. Estrada? No. No, no. Eric, Eric Estrada. Oh, the, the, the dude with the Jerry Curl from Coming to America? Yes. I can't remember his last name. I know! <laughs> That's twice. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> um, but he directed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, yeah. and I love basketball at the time. I was still playing. Um, and I was kind of, they wanted me for the role. And when I went in for my second callback, it felt so bad. It felt so nasty on my body. The scene was him going cold turkey in a jail cell after he got arrested because he was a heroin addict. Mm -hmm. And um, I just wasn't, I, I don't know, at that time of my life, my level of maturity, I knew I wasn't prepared to kind of dive into that yeah. and, and, and be able to carry that around with me for too long. You know, you look at somebody like Heath Ledger after playing the Joker. Yeah, yeah, it killed him. I mean, he killed it. Well, it killed him. He didn't kill himself. He killed himself accidentally, mm -hmm. taking sleeping pills because he couldn't sleep. Because he was too into that character. 
That'll keep Trying you to awake, escape. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep you up. Yeah. Keep you up at night. I'm telling you, it's not a game. You know, Donnell was a was a very vulnerable character. Like I always think about the episode when Maya cheated on Ooh. him. Wow. Um, Mar 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 Brock Akil asked me. So what happens now? Like when Maya tells you, when she admits, what happens now? And I was so quick to answer. I said, either he gonna beat that ass, or <laughs> or or he's gonna be heartbroken. And not be able to get over it. You know, so we're not going to do that on, on TV, you know. Um, and that's not the the relationship. I thought that was a beautiful um, way to show black love on television. Mm -hmm. Darnell. So, yeah, I said, you know, I think he would be heartbroken. And, Ma and Mara was like, all right, well, then I'm going to need that. You don't see that kind of, like, versatility of emotions for black men anymore that much. In movies, I I have to say I took that for granted, girlfriend. Um, that because, whole role? Well, no, just the show. I thought, even with Juice, I thought when we did Juice, it was Juice, New Jack City, Boys in the Hood, Menace to Society. I thought that we would be doing this work, that we were kind of opening the door, and we would be doing work like this for. And this is a whole new crop of talent, and honestly, a lot of those guys are still working, yeah. which is beautiful. Um, but they shut that down kind of quick. I know. We talked to Erica Alexander about that. She says she feels like that was purposely done. I do too. Really? Why? Why do you think so? Um, if you, I think they were shocked. I think the the, I think the power structure <coughs> in Hollywood in America was shocked and amazed that a character like Bishop would would become a source of power for young black people in this country. As opposed to, you know, a villain and and no, we understood why. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. He's the way yeah. he is. We understood that he was taking a stand for his own humanity, even though he did it in this way. I mean, this these are children, you know. I mean, a lot of times we even some of these ball players we get on them about their behavior or mistakes that they make. That kid, twenty two years old, yeah, you yeah. don't know he's a child. You know, and you just gave him twenty million dollars. What you what you think's gonna happen? You know, um, that you you gotta you gotta shut that down. I feel know? like also it was just too much positive uh, influences back then. Like you know, you think about all the the Cosby Show and Different World, <clears throat> and like I just feel like they felt like you know what, let's close this down. Living yeah, but, single, but but that that can live. You can you can have a Huxtable family. Mm -hmm. That's uh, something that's palatable. For white America, you know they can deal with that. Not, not, not minister society, not, not Jews. bishop, not yeah, no, yeah. no. And look what Bishop did. It made Bishop gave birth to Tupac. I don't. I I think Tupac was hugely talented and 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 was going to be successful regardless. But given the opportunity to give life to Bishop and then go jump into his music career, Tupac, Tupac, it right. gave him so much power. And confidence in who he was as an artist and as a man, and like, and 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 the acceptance, and he saw the love, like out in the world. Mm -hmm. And for us as as black males, we don't see that. That's not what we see on a daily basis. We don't walk out of our house thinking, "Oh, I'm gonna get love today." Mm. And and we loved Pac. Were you cool with Pac after the movie? Did y'all? Hell yeah, that? yeah. Do you think Pac ever got that character out of him? I think that character was always in him, but the movie was able to turn the volume up to 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, you we can't walk out in the street and just say whatever we want to say at whatever volume we want to say it at. Mm -hmm. I mean, Bishop, Bi but Bishop gave him license to do that. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. You know, nobody said, ah, that ain't, they were like, oh no, that, that's Bishop. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, but he yeah. never turned it down though. So could that role have possibly led to his demise maybe? Um. I I believe Pac was on that path regardless. Gotcha. And he embraced it. Right. Gotcha. You know, there's there's power in, in, in martyrdom. It's part of it's part of our culture. Um Western civilization, you know. Getting up on the cross and, and doing That's why that people thing. love Kaepernick. Mm hmm That's why they love Meek to a certain extent. They love Martin Luther King. Yeah. That's why yeah, they love yeah. Malcolm X. Yeah. You know. Gandhi, yeah. 
Did everybody on the set of Girlfriends get along? No. But yes. <laughs> I, no, but I, I think everybody loved each other. But when you're together for that long of a period of time, you know, yeah, there's going to be, I mean, me and my brother fight. You know, that's family. Who'd you beef with the most on the show? Um, Probably Golden. Really? Yeah. So y'all had a real tension. Because we would, you know. It probably helps when the. When oh, the no acting. doubt. No doubt. You know, and Golden, I love Golden. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. she's amazing. She's a she's a beautiful actor, um, strong black woman, a mother now. Um, but again, she gonna tell the truth. Yeah, yeah. If everybody telling the truth, we gonna knock heads on occasion. Word. But it's still love, you know. I mean, Tracy Ellis Ross, her her mother's Diana Ross. Right. You ain't gonna tell her nothing. <laughs> you know, no, but seriously. And Tracy, and I, and I love that about Tracy, that she understands her power. Mm -hmm. You ain't telling me nothing. I'm gonna do what I wanna do. This is a hobby. You know, I do. No. I've seen Tracy many times flat out be like, no. <laughs> That's not happening. I was like, cool. Okay. Yeah. Now, if Mara Brackerkill asked you today, what would you do if your girlfriend cheated on you? What would your response be today? Would it still be just? Be and you know, but it's not your girlfriend; it's your wife. Your wife, yes. It, no, it's your wife. There's a difference. Okay. You know. So if she between... asked you that today, what would your response? It's be? the would same it be the answer. Same? Mm -hmm. It's the exact it'll, same answer. Be the ass or be heartbroken. Right. I mean, what what uh, what, what are you gonna do? I can I, I can understand the feeling. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because you are all mature enough, we probably feel that way, but we wouldn't act on it. People always say, "Leave." I would leave. Mm -hmm. If that's the love of your life, it's not that, it's easy. Not that easy to just walk out of the door. Not at when all. you've made an investment in someone, it's not that easy what to walk out of the no, door. I agree, what but when you're 40 something years what, old, what, we all too old to be making these mistakes. But if you do, yes. if your wife makes a mistake, women, you know right what I'm saying? Now, you ain't going nowhere. That ain't true. I don't know about that. Right. Damn, you got to think about it. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm telling you the truth. We're too old for this. <laughs> all right, but, but what about what about the emotional content in that moment? I'll be hurt. But we don't always. Take the time to think about Last what we're year gonna you wasn't do. too old for this? Two years ago you wasn't too old for this? I said on both ends. Okay, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I said on both okay, ends. Exactly. Like and I wouldn't I would, if I did if I cheated, I wouldn't expect her to right. stick around. We grown. Exactly. We got three kids. We forty years old. Like But why but if she did stick around, why why do you think she would? Because she loves me. Right. And, and she's again. made an investment in Yeah, and I feel the same way. I would <laughs> right. stick around for the same reason. Right. Yeah. I'm going to throw away 10 years. Of, uh, mm. You'd probably get to the root of why somebody cheated, too. Correct. I would think. Like, you would have to understand. Well, either that or girlfriends. Mm -hmm. But the male, the male ego is a very, very fragile mechanism. You know? And, very and fragile. There's been, there's been so many times where I've thought to myself, after the fact, man, I, I should have and could have handled it this way. But because of the moment, no, I got I got a little away from myself, you know, and, and reacted as opposed to <laughs> thinking about how how I could handle this situation in, in a mature manner. Are you married now? No. You got a very psychotic uh, giggle. I just want you to know that. There's a, there's a, like, 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 it's very psychotic, just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> Which brings us to Bronx SIU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but think about it. A lot, a lot of the characters I've played have have a little bit of you know, yeah, something there. So it's hard. It's, I don't even want to talk to you no more. It's, <laughs> so it's hard to get that out. <laughs> no, no. Well, well, it's not even a matter of getting it out. It's yeah. that it's there. It's in there. Yeah. True. True. You guys are awkwardly looking at each other. <laughs> What's going on? Hey, there you go again. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's hard to get it out when you guys are looking at each other. All right. Yeah. Now, you said you didn't appreciate girlfriends. <laughs> well, no. It's, it's that you're there, and, and it's fun, and it's smart, and you're making money, and you're doing the thing. Um, there's going to be other stuff like this. There's going to be more work like this. You thought it was just going to keep coming. Well, even the writing. Um, I took the writing for granted. You know, you, you assume things are going to get better. Looking back on it now, that was a really smart show. Very. Yeah, very Depicting smart. Depicting black women yeah. in, in a way that wasn't really happening at the time. And, and, you know, and again, it goes, you have living single, mm -hmm. then you get girlfriends, you know, it starts to build. And then you have... Reality TV, Flavor of Love. And... 
I mean, insecure. I think is kind of dope. Now. Great. Oh, I love insecure. But but how how many years after the fact is that? You know, um, I was I, hearing some of the dialogue on girlfriends. You know, at the time, it's like, all right, cool. You know, but now it's like, wow. You know, um, it was a hot show. Is Does that like that help you okay. understand women more? Yes, not only not only the show, but being in that environment. Um, Mara Brock Akil is a beast. Incredible. An incredible woman. Brilliant. Um, uh, I, I think she she was a trailblazer, you know, diplomatic. Mm -hmm. uh, she knew how to, she, she figured out how to navigate that system. And that is not simple. Mm -hmm. Definitely not, not an easy task at all. You know, and she, she did it with her husband. They built it together. Mm -hmm. Um pretty pretty dope feat. Was it hard not to actually grow feelings for Golden? Like real feelings in real life? No, it wasn't difficult at all. Um, no. So you could just turn it off like Well it, it, that never got turned on. We were working. Gotcha, you know? gotcha. All the cameras um, around, people around, it's hard to be feeling really romantic. I had a I, I, I got taken to dinner once by an executive from the CW and this executive actually Asked if Golden and I were, were doing that thing. That and means y'all were like, doing a good job. I was like, wow, like you know. You he believed it. You don't know me like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That seems you know a little off, but no, um, no. But yeah, I did take it as a compliment. It was meant that way, but it was still a little weird. Um, it's not as again one of those things. It's not as easy as you might think. Not gotcha, chemistry gotcha. that way. Right. Gotcha. You know? What about playing in the Tiger Woods story? See, I was talking about that rehearsal process thing. Again, cool, great, but I didn't get to sit down with Tiger, and we didn't, you know, it was uh, LeVar Burton directed that, so it was kind of cool, mm -hmm. you know, working with him. I've had I've had the good fortune to have worked with some lovely people over the years uh, that I've learned a lot from. Um, but yeah, that was that was that was kind of deep because that was at the time when he had just won right after he'd won his first Masters. So, yeah, it was interesting. Now let's talk about Bronx SIU. Let's. Look, what that, yeah. look. Now let's talk about, what's, what's that about? Uh, explain that a little bit. Uh, UMC, um, Amazon Prime Video, you know, cop drama. Yeah, the chief. Uh, yeah, but but again, uh, I, got, I got brought in, you know, hired gun to help out. I was invited <laughs> uh, to the party. Uh, on the show now, they've got Brian White. Mm. Are y'all familiar with Brian White? Brian's cool people. Uh, maybe if I see his face. Yeah, Brian. Brian's cool. Brian and I. You know Brian White. He was in um. Hmm. Yeah. He became. He been down here before. The dude, right, the brother right here, left. Just yeah. take my word when I tell you I don't know. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, Brian. Brian's cool people, man. <laughs> um, Brian's been in the business a long time. Really, really talented. Talented actor. He started the show Shanti Lowry. Y'all know Shanti from the game. Which one is Shanti from the game? Come on, man. The picture's right here. Y'all. <laughs> I don't have. Oh, I don't have that sheet. Right hold here, on, man. hold on. Sorry. Shanti was up here too. No, Shanti was. Oh, up okay. Here. Yeah. No, I know her. But Brian yeah. was up here. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. A new cat, uh, Amir Baraka, uh, beautiful brother. I got to work with him. Um. So so far for season two, I've mostly worked with Shanti and Amir. Mm -hmm. Now. Uh, Peter Wise does casting for this show. Mm -hmm. I've never done like a web series before. This is my first one. So when Peter Wise called me, and I've known Peter for over 20 years, he said, Khalil, um, we need you to come in. For, it wasn't coming in audition, none of that. Like, can you come do this work? Okay, so he gave you the role, no audition. He was invited. Yes. You were invited. Dope. Exactly. Yeah. So I was like, what's the show? You know, it's on Amazon Prime Video, UMC, UMC Urban Movie Channel, mm -hmm. um, Rob Johnson's new venture. Mm -hmm. um, so that's cool. What about the show? He sent me over some tape. The show looks great, man. The production value on, on, the, on this project is really solid. Mm -hmm. um, the actor who was playing the, the chief before, I don't know exactly what happened with that. Didn't ask any questions, but they asked me to come replace him. Season two starts yes. off with you as the chief. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, popping. How can people watch it's, it if they want to check it out? 
on on uh, UMC. Amazon Prime Video, <laughs> UMC.TV, Urban Movie Channel. You can go log on right now. Um, when you go on, when you log on to UMC, mm -hmm. uh, the first thing that pops up is is Bronx SIU. Okay, nominated for daytime Emmys. I think four people got nominated. Dope. Show got nominated. Dope. Yeah, I was surprised. Um, I was even surprised when when Peter sent over over the um tape on the show when he said web series. I was like, okay. But it the show looks looks really fly. Did you look down on it a little bit because you come yeah. from the TV film world? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I did, and and I, immediately some sort of like reality TV thing popped into my head. <laughs> I, I was like, oh, I don't know. But Michael Mayhall directed all the episodes that I was in. Uh, Dan Garcia also um, they they created the show. Um, it was really a pleasure because Peter, I was I was reticent. And Peter was like, one, we need you. Two, you're available. Come on, man. <laughs> it's me. I was like, all right, I'm going to come through. And he said, watch. Once you get here, you'll be fine. It's beautiful. The camera crew was great. They re they really have a have a, a solid production going on mm -hmm. over there. And the fact that they've been nominated for, for Emmys now uh, is a t is, you know, speaks to that. Um, yeah, the show's cool. Nope. You're not a and dirty cop, are you? Yes. Okay. Yes. Just had to put that out there. I mean, in in the commitment level. Um, How do you research that? Like, what kind of research do you do for a role? I didn't have no time from? on this. Mm -hmm. I literally got called and had to jump in a, a, a few days after I got the call. So what's the process of pulling from something to play a character? What did you think, okay, this is, from my own experience... This is exactly. How gonna... You have to. You have but to like, work. What, what if you're I'm, I'm an old man. I've got plenty of experience <laughs> at this point, and I am a seasoned actor. Mm -hmm. So I can I can definitely jump in and handle my business. But it was a lot simpler considering that the cast was completely committed. Shanti Lowry is is, is a pro. Uh, Brian White is a pro. Like they've already kind of uh, set up an environment that that should be taken seriously. So so I was ready to go in and, and throw down and do my work. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking forward to season three. You know, it, it looks the, it looks good for that now because okay. of the whole Emmy situation, oh, cool. you know. Because that, that was the talk when I left. Mike Mayhall said, you know, if we do season three, you know, we're going to need you up in here. I was yeah. like, talk to me. <laughs> you know, what we're talking about. Um, but, but with the Emmy situation, you know, I, I think that's going to happen. But well, thank you for joining no, no, before us. Before we leave, I want to ask you about your father and the last poets. What about it? Like, how did that affect you growing up? Like, your choice in music, your voice. Like, how did that um, affect you? I think the the ability to to embrace being an artist mm -hmm. was birthed out of that, as opposed to just being a celebrity or or an actor or or just somebody chasing fame. Honestly, I mean, if anybody in this room has followed my career over the almost thirty years that I've been doing this. I'm, I've I've never really been overly concerned with, with being famous. It's always kind of been about, you know, what I'm what I'm doing as an artist and what I'm creating. I've been doing a ton of writing and some mm -hmm. directing. Um, even even that, like now, finally starting to delve into some poetry and things like that. Mm -hmm. Is it hard though? Because like the last poets didn't censor themselves, but At as all. an actor, they came to my college with Sonia Sanchez to perform. Yeah, when yeah. I was in so school. as an actor, you can't really speak freely sometimes when you're doing interviews and things like that. Well, that's why I think the theater is important. Mm -hmm. um, I was I was a little surprised doing Girlfriends at what we could say and what we cannot say. It's on TV. The network will censor you. Mm -hmm. Like, no, that's that's not happening. Um, same thing with film. You're you're, but with theater, you have a specific audience. They're coming to see what you put up. I think that's like the last place where we can really tell our stories. I just saw a play called Ain't No Mo. At the public theater, um, Jordan e. Cooper wrote it. Yeah, hey, that's the ain't Lee Daniels behind that or somebody? Uh no, ain't no, no, more? no. Jordan e. Cooper is a young new playwright. Yeah, it was brilliant, Jordan's amazing. Yo, but <laughs> I, I just I saw, saw this last week. Of that. I just saw this last week, possibly. Yeah, I think I saw the original version of that. Um, man, uh, is that it, where the people? We're moving back to Africa? Yes. Yes, I saw that. That was great. Jordan's a beast. I'm telling you, anybody in this room, if you have the time, I think it's cl the show's closing April 21st. I'm going Friday. Talk about unapologetically yep. black, mm. a no censorship. I took my mother, and we both felt amazing when, when we left the show. 
So uh Now yeah. Jordan's brilliant. Yeah. And he's Jordan young Cooper. too. Right. Yeah, he's like twenty. But this this gives me hope. Yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And it felt good to know that that we're still creating, we're still telling our stories. And for all those young artists out there that are getting started, consider writing, please. Right. Because this they is this is how how we, you know, get get us out there. Right, right, you right. know what I mean? The true us. I mean, how did you feel after seeing that show? I felt good. I actually saw, I saw, I don't know what you call it. They did it early on, like a month ago. Development, yeah, 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 right, yeah. yeah. So I saw it early, early. Previews. But I thought it was great. And yeah. I, I'm going to see it actually Friday, like the more finalized version. But just the story was ill. Ain't no more. Yeah, Ain't yeah, no more. yeah it, was, it was brilliant. It was well, brilliant. Well, thank you for joining You're us, You're welcome. Brother. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you. It's Khalil Kane. Yes. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning.